is Pogo here, and welcome to another episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, we're going to learn how to make a grappling hook. This is possibly the most requested episode ever, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fulfill all the requests and show you guys how to make a grappling hook. Uh, let me just quickly go over what I've already done. So I made a class, or a I made a project called Grappler, has the package in the class, the plugin.yml, no commands, no permissions, just, you know, your standard plugin.yml. Over in the actual Grappler source, um, it extends to have a plugin, of course, and it does implement listener because this is going to be completely listener-based. Uh, the onenable registers the events. We have two array lists. One of them handles players that are cooling down, so right after you use the grappling hook, you gotta wait before you use it again, or else it could mess it up if you spam it, and it would probably lag out the server. And then the nofall array list basically just keeps track of all of the players in the list. Uh, sorry, all the players that just grappled. So if you just grapple, it adds you to the list. Um, when you fall, it will, you know, undo the fall damage so that you don't get hurt from grappling. Um, we have a projectile launch event because um, we're going to be using a fishing uh, rod and the bobber from the fishing rod is considered an entity and the projectile launch event will work uh, when the uh, bobber is fired out. This event will be called and then we're going to use this to do all the work. And finally, I have this method called get vector for points. It's not, it's just an algorithm and it's really confusing, but we will use it in the plugin. So I just, just copy that from the source. It's completely uninteresting. It's unimportant, really. You just need to have it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we get, we need to do a few t checks. So we're going to say exclamation point e dot get entity type dot equals entity type dot fishing hook return so if we're not dealing with the fishing hook you want to return then we also want to say if exclamation point uh, e dot get entity dot get shooter instance of player return so if the shooter is not a player, I don't know if that's possible with a um, with a fishing rod. I mean, with like a snowball, it could be thrown from a dispenser maybe, but uh, we just want to put that check in anyways because it's always good to check before you um, you know do anything. So then we can just go ahead and write player p equals e dot get entity dot get shooter, and then we're gonna cast. It's just an easy. It's just like an easy way to get access to the player because we're going to be calling on them a lot. Uh, so now we just need to say if uh, the cooldown dot contains p, um, then e dot set cancel true and return. So if the player is cooling down, we of course want to ignore the event. So you know if if we're not dealing with a fishing rod and if we're not dealing with a player, we want to ignore the event. Then if they're cooling down, we want to ignore it. And it's always good to ignore before you start doing stuff. Because if you waited, if you calculated a ton of stuff before ignoring, then those calculations would use up CPU and, and whatever, and it would it would waste, um, it would just waste energy. So now we just need to go ahead and declare two locations, uh, or we can actually only do one. We're going to say um, location target equals null. And now we need to figure out what the target is. The target is basically the block that they're looking at. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say for block block p dot get target blocks null and 100. So what we're doing is we're iterating and import. We're iterating over all of the blocks. Oh, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be get line of sight. Get line of sight. Okay, and why is this still not working? Okay, I spelled it wrong. 
Alright, so what we're doing here is we're iterating over all of the blocks that are within 100 blocks of the player. So, you know, so it'll start with the block that's, that the player's looking at right now, then it'll keep moving on. So basically, the player needs to be looking at a block within 100 blocks in order to move them, and that's just how this works. So, uh, you will notice that it's deprecated, but we just want to suppress the warning because I don't know of a different way to handle that. So, now we're going to say if exclamation point block dot get type dot equals material dot air. Make sure you do the bucket air. And then we're going to say target equals lock dot get location and then break so what we're doing here is um, it'll start at the closest block and keep going and if the block is not equal to air um, so basically you know if the so if it's you know any block other than air then uh, we do target equals block that get location we set target to the location and then we break the loop because there's no reason if if the tenth block is is a valid non-air block, there's no reason to iterate over the next 90, and that would also actually mess it up, maybe. So, now we're going to say if target is equal to null, then e.setCancelled true and return. So, if they're not looking at anything, then of course we want to stop them right there. You could optionally send a message, but I think it might get a bit spammy and as long as people can figure out that you need to be looking at something to grapple, uh, which of course makes sense in real life, you wouldn't grapple in midair. That that doesn't make any sense. So now um, we need to go ahead and say p dot teleport to p dot get location dot add zero zero point five and zero. So what we're doing is we're just increasing their y a little bit to move them up. And then we're going to say vector v equals get vector for points for, uh, first we're going to do p.getLocation, and then we're going to do target. So again, so see now we're actually using that method and then what we're going to do is we're going to say e dot get entity dot set velocity to v so we're calling that bobber and we're you know throwing it out to that target location where we are looking then we want to go ahead and say if exclamation point no fall dot contains p no fall dot add p so if the so if the player is not already being protected uh, then, of course, we want to add them. And then, after the bobber is thrown out, we just want to wait for a really short amount of time and then send the player off, because it wouldn't make sense if the player was flying with the bobber. So we're just going to write a quick delayed task. sync delayed task. The plugin is this uh, new runnable public void run, and then it's going to be five, which is uh, one fourth of a second, just to give it time to get out there a little bit. And then we're just going to say p dot set velocity to v, and we do need to make both the vector and the player final since we're accessing it from an inner class. So then, after the bobber gets a little chance to fly out, then we're going to send the player off. And then, we are going to add the player to the cooldown. And then we are going to do another uh, delayed task, so we can just copy this, and that will uh, remove the player from the cooldown. This one we're going to do in, so it'll wait for three-fourths of a second, and then remove them. This is just to stop, um, you know, spamming. All right, and I believe that that is all that we need to do for this. Now we just need to write, of course, a method that handles the uh, no damage. So this is going to be an entity damage event. 
T damage event E. And then we are going to say if exclamation point E dot get entity instance of player return. So if the entity is not a player, then we don't really care. And we're going to say if exclamation point uh, or exclamation point E dot get um, E dot get cause dot equals damage cause dot and then it's going to be fall then return so if they get hurt for any reason other than falling if someone you know hits them in midair then that's fine but uh, we just want to stop them from getting hurt from falling and then we are going to say uh, player p equals player e dot get entity and again we can do this safely because um, we already checked if it's not a player and we stopped if it wasn't a player. Then we can say if no fall dot con no fall no, I spelled it like that. If no fall dot contains player then we want to um, cancel the event and then no fall dot remove p. So of course you want to remove the player from the no fall because we don't want them to forever be protected. And that should actually do it. Um, let's go ahead and test it out. So, grappler, and we're going to call this grappler. Finish. All right. Now we're going to head on over to documents, YouTube, bucket coding, testing the server. And let's go ahead and start up the testing server. Let me see if I have anything else in here. We can get rid of that. All right. Okay, so let's just give this a second to load and make sure that I didn't misspell something in the plugin.yml. All right, so it loaded up Grappler and it's okay, it's generating a world for some reason. So let's go ahead and open up Minecraft. All right, servers running. All right, and I apologize if there's some background noise. The computer fans start running pretty fast when, uh, when I start doing intensive stuff like this. All right, so have the launcher, and I already do have the latest version of Minecraft, so this should start up in just a second. All right. So here comes Minecraft, running a bit slow. And now let's go ahead and join localhost. It's being quite slow. But there we go. Ah, one second. Alright, so now I am back in the overworld, and let's go ahead and fishing rod. Okay, so let's go ahead, and it is time for the moment of truth. I'm going to aim at that tree, and yes, as you can see, it worked without error. So, I can pick a, uh, I can target a block. You'll notice that if I'm not looking at a block, it ignores it if I just look up at the sky. But wherever I look, if there's a target block, it will fling me out in that direction. Now, of course, you can change the values. If you experiment a little bit, then you can change the values that are used. You could actually make the player go higher. You could even, like, you know, you know, check if the player has a specific item and then have that influence the player. It would be cool if you... The less items the player had in their inventory, the faster it would go. That would be a cool application for this. But as you can see, this is, in fact, a working grappling hook. So I can target anything um, that is far enough away and then use it. And trust me, this is so much fun. This is way more fun than it looks just watching me. But if you have a bunch of, like, you know, tall uh, areas or, like, mountains and you just like grapple from one 
uh, spot to another in midair. It's it's a lot of fun. I would I mean I would recommend just even building the code and trying it out for yourself. It's really fun. So that is all for this video. We made a um made a grappling hook plugin that transforms fishing hooks or fishing rods rather into fancy grappling hooks. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and if you like this video, click the like button. I will see you guys soon with some more videos. Bye guys.